everybody and welcome to the news from the ANU Medical School from today, the 20th of November 2020. Last week we celebrated NADOC week. The theme this year was Always Was, Always Will Be, which recognises that First Nations people have occupied and cared for this continent for over 65,000 years. And this week acknowledges and celebrates that our nation's story did not begin with documented European contact, but that the, the very first footprints on this continent were those belonging to First Nations people. This year, NADOC 2020 invited all Australians to embrace the true history of this country, a history which dates back thousands and thousands of generations. Living in Australia, it is easy to become complacent about the pandemic that is still raging worldwide. And you would have seen the numbers, more than 250,000 deaths in the US, more than half of all COVID infections uh, happening on the European continent, and I do understand that the UK has reached 50,000 deaths. In Australia, things are very good. However, there has been an outbreak in South Australia and the rules around travelling change weekly. For this week, um, it is still discouraged to travel to metropolitan Melbourne, um, but the travel restrictions to and from Victoria will be lifted on the 23rd of November if numbers stay low. However, with the outbreak in South Australia, everybody is strongly to, discouraged to travel to South Australia. And if you are a clinician or a student still on placement somewhere, um, remember that if you've been in South Australia, you cannot work clinically for two weeks. Please keep yourself updated with the COVID-19 website, whether it'll be the ANU website, ACT New South Wales or New, uh, South Australia. For the students, exams are still ongoing, but some students have already written their exams and have received their results. And congratulations to those Year 4 students who um, have passed their um, exams and who we will be celebrating as future doctors very, very soon. Remember, if you're planning to travel overseas, you are not guaranteed to be allowed back into the country, so we strongly discourage overseas travel. There will be no ANU graduation ball this year, but as I announced about a fortnight ago, there will be an interactive multi-location hybrid live graduation by ANU sometime in January next year. The Medical Student Society is planning the graduation ball with restricted numbers, and we look forward to celebrating our future doctors. Whilst you all may be very happy to have passed your exams, can I please still remind you of the expected behaviours during this pandemic? please remain physically distanced. You are future doctors and you are seen in the community as such. And it is expected that you'd adhere to the guidelines that are out there and that are for everybody. So please remember that when you're out celebrating your successes. At the college, the Transform White Paper has been submitted to the Senior Management Group and will be presented to a new council early in December. This paper outlines the future for the college um, with the next steps. There is a lot of information on the intranet. Please have a look. We will also see that Professor Grun, the Dean of the college, will come and talk to the schools about the future of the college in the very near future. And last week, we traveled to Kuma and to Bega, where ANU and the University of Canberra have officially opened two new clinical training facilities and student accommodations as part of the Southeast New South Wales Health Collaborative Project. This was funded by the federal government starting in 2015, and the facilities will increase the training capabilities and research facilities, not just for our medical students on medicine in general, but also for nursing, midwifery and allied health. It was a great day and it was fabulous to meet the team down in Kuma and Mbega and our um, rural students. And uh, here is a great photo of all of us together in Mbega. Now, as you may know, ANU measures not just educational, but also research output, not just per person, but particularly importantly per school and per college. The research is collected in a system that's called AREAS and here at the medical school we have staff putting research into the AREAS system so that our output can be measured. If you are an academic and you are receiving an email to please help us um, identify your research papers so that we can put it into AREAS, can I please ask you to respond as soon as possible um, so that we can get your publications up to date. 
TELT uh, will have ongoing education for you about technology, enhanced learning and teaching. There will be a session on interactive Zoom on Wednesday the 2nd of December, a Christmas special with games on Tuesday the 15th of December, and exploring Zoom and learning more about it next year on Tuesday the 19th of January. Come along, Zoom in and learn about technology enhanced learning and teaching and how it can help your teaching in the future. In the spotlight this week is Professor Peter Collignon. Peter, as you know, is an infectious disease specialist and has featured very prominently in social media since the beginning of the pandemic, giving us his views on how to battle the pandemic, but also educating us on how we can ensure everybody's safety. With his social media, he has reached more than 200 million people, and you can read more about him on our website and about the best way to make decisions about the pandemic restrictions, which in his view should be by analysing the research data and the risk of each situation. And we'd like to welcome Sir Professor Edward Byrne to the ANU and the College in January 2021. Professor Byrne will be ANU's Distinguished Vice-Chancellor's Fellow. He is currently the King's College President and had previously been the President and Vice-Chancellor at Monash. He will be working with us here at the college about Transform and we are very much looking forward to meeting him and learning from his experience. One of the great perks of this job is congratulating our staff on their contribution to research education or service. As you know, many of our clinicians are honorary academics, they are not paid by the university for their contribution, yet they contribute greatly, as I said, whether in research, teaching or in service. About a fortnight ago, the ACT Australian of the Year Awards were given away. And this year's winner is Professor Brendan Murphy, who is an honorary professor here with us at the university with a medical school in the college. He is the 2021 ACT Australian of the Year and will represent the ACT in the Australian of the Year Awards in January. Brendan is, uh, was the Chief Medical Officer, steering the federal government and the country through the initial outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Congratulations, Brendan. And I'm also very happy to announce the success of some of our academics in the promotions round for the university about a fortnight ago. The following were promoted to Senior Lecturer Level C, that's Nathan Emmerich, Lillian Smythe and Stuart Sutherland. And congratulations to those of you who were successful in your promotion to Associate Professor. That was Anna Olson, Ricardo Natoli and Diana Perryman. Well done. These new titles will come into place as of January 2021 and I'd like you to join me in congratulating our colleagues. The Vice-Chancellor Awards recognise the contribution of our academics to teaching, learning, research, but also to service. And this year, the Vice-Chancellor's Award for Educational Excellence was given to Associate Professor Dipti Talalika for her contribution to teaching in the medical school. And the Vice-Chancellor Award for Impact and Engagement was given to Associate Professor Sanjaya Senanayaki and Professor Peter Colignon for their contribution and particularly for their social media presence and educating everybody about the pandemic. Congratulations to all. There were also other college members recognised. Um, this was announced by the Dean per email. Please have a look there. Congratulations to everybody. And in the media this week, we saw Professor Peter Colignon again on ABC Radio, The Herald Sun, Business Inside Australia and on Channel 7, Professor Chris Nolan on SBS News, and Associate Professor Sanjaya Senanayaki on 2CC Canberra Live, ABC News Online and ABC Radio. Events this week are about everything rural general practice. These events are hosted by the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners and they start off with a free webinar for medical students and junior doctors on Wednesday the 2nd of December. You have to register. Please email rural at racgp.org.au if you want to get a spot on this webinar. That's all from me for this fortnight. Please remember to stay home if you're unwell, adhere to the travel restrictions and follow the physical distancing guidelines. Importantly, please look after your family and friends. And if you have any comments or feedback, please contact us on the Operation Graduate email address. And in terms of congratulations, I'd like to congratulate the Maroons for winning the 2020 State of Origin on Wednesday night. Go the Maroons. Yes. See you all in a fortnight. Bye-bye.